Here is our second lesson on solving linear systems, solving linear systems by substitution. So remember that solving a linear system means to find the values of the variables that satisfy all of the equations in the system. We're going to be looking at four different systems of equations. One, two, three, four. Notice each of those systems has two linear equations. So our job for each of those is to figure out an ordered pair x, y that satisfies both of the equations. So graphically speaking, what we're doing is we're going to be finding the point of intersection, the point where the lines intersect. In the first lesson of this unit, we learned how to do that graphically, but sometimes we had to estimate the solutions. So in this lesson, we're going to learn an algebraic method called substitution, where we'll make sure we get exact answers for each linear system. Let me take you through again the three scenarios that can happen when solving a linear system, and then talk about when we're doing this algebraic solution, what's going to happen for each of these scenarios. So the first scenario that could happen is that your two lines intersect, so there is a point of intersection. If that happens, the two lines are going to have different slopes, and usually different x and y intercepts, unless they intersect on the x or y axis. And you'll get one solution if the lines intersect. And what's going to happen algebraically? You'll get a single answer for both x and y that satisfy both equations. The second scenario is what if your lines are parallel and distinct? Notice in the diagram, the two lines run parallel to each other, but never actually intersect. If that's the case, the equations of the lines are going to have the exact same slope, but their y and x intercepts are going to be different. You will get no solutions when trying to solve this system of equations. And what's going to happen algebraically when you're trying to solve this system is that you'll get an equation that isn't true for any value of the variable. So for example, in your solving process, you may get to a point where you get an equation that needs to be solved like 0x equals 5. Now, there's no value you could plug in for x to make that equation true because 0 times anything is 0. There's no way it could be 5. So if that happens to you, you know what you have is a system of equations where the two lines are parallel and distinct, meaning there are no solutions. The other option is that the two lines are parallel and coincident, which means the lines are actually right on top of each other. So I know it looks like you only see one line there, but the red and blue line are actually right on top of each other in that graph. So when that happens, the equations of the lines will have the exact same slope and their X and Y intercepts are going to be the exact same, which means that there are an infinite number of solutions to the system of equations because they share every x, y point. So there are an infinite number of x, y points that satisfy both equations. What's going to happen algebraically that tell you that the lines are parallel and coincident? You're going to get an equation in your solving process that's true for all values of the variable. So for example, you may get an equation that says 0x equals 0. If that happens, well, you could plug in anything for x and that equation is true, right? 0 times anything is 0. So if that happens to you in your solving process, then you know what you have are two lines that are parallel and coincident, meaning there are an infinite number of solutions to the system. So let's go through four examples. And within those four practice examples, we will encounter each of these three different scenarios. When we're using the method of substitution, we're going to follow these five steps. We'll start by rearranging either of the original equations to isolate a variable, either X or Y, it doesn't matter. We'll choose whatever is easiest. We then substitute what the isolated variable is equal to into the other equation. That's why this is called substitution, because the second step, we have to do a substitution. Step three, we solve the new equation for the one variable that is in that equation, and then plug that answer for the variable back into either of the original equations to solve for the other variable. And of course, step five, we should always check our answer in both equations to make sure it's right. I'll reference those five steps while we solve these systems. So in doing substitution, I like to set it up so that I have the equations beside each other. So I'll have line one, I'll rewrite here, and I'll write line two right beside it. So keep in mind, our goal is to find what value of x and y satisfies both equations. Step one tells us we have to pick one of the variables in either of these equations to isolate. I like to look for one that has a coefficient of one. That's usually easiest to isolate. So I notice the x in line one has a coefficient of one. So let's isolate that. So I'll rearrange this by subtracting the 4y to the other side, and it would be x equals 6 minus 4y. That's step one done. Step two says we need to now take 
what the isolated variable is equal to, 6 minus 4y, and substitute it in for x into the other equation. So we'll replace the x in line 2 with 6 minus 4y. So line 2 equals 2 times 6 minus 4y minus 3y equals 1. So really what we're doing is we're forcing their x variables to be equal, and now we're solving for what value of y will make that true. So we have an equation that only has one variable. It only has the variable y. We can solve that equation. That's what step three tells us to do. So to solve this equation, I think the easiest thing to do is start by distributing this two into the brackets. So two times six is 12, minus two times four y is eight y. I'll collect my like terms. I have 12 minus 11 y equals one. And now I need to isolate y. I think I'll move the negative 11 y to the right and bring the constant of one to the left. It changes both of the signs of those terms. I have 11 equals 11 y, so therefore y is one. So I have my answer for y. That's step three done. Step four says I now need to sub that answer for y back into either original equation to solve for x. Usually the easiest way to solve for the other variable is to use this rearranged version of the other equation that already has the other variable isolated. Right, just take our answer for y, sub it in for y, and evaluate. So I have x equals six minus four times, we just solved for y to be one, so sub in one. We get x equals six minus four, which is two. So our solution to the linear system is x equals two and y equals one. Those are the values of the variables that make both of the original equations true. Now we should check to make sure that that's the correct answer. So I'm going to check the solution x equals two, y equals one. I need to check it in both equations. I'll check it in line one first by doing a left side, right side check. The left side is x plus four y, the right side is six. If I plug in my solution for x and y, so two plus four times one, the left side is equal to the right side. Good, so the solution two one satisfies the first equation, but does it also satisfy the second equation? Right, all we've proven by plugging into one equation is proving that the point 2, 1 is on line 1. Is it also on line 2? Let's have a look. So I'll plug in my point 2, 1 for x and y. I get 4 minus 3, which is 1. Left side and right side equal. Okay, so we've proven that the point 2, 1 is on both lines. Therefore, that's where the lines intersect. So this is the correct solution to our system. So we should write our final answer. The solution is, and we could either write it as an x, y point, or we could just list the answers for x and y. I'll write it like that. The solution is x equals two, y equals one. But like I said, if you wanna write it as an x, y point to one, that's fine as well. Let's try another one. I'm gonna set it up the same way, write the equations beside each other. And now I need to isolate one of the variables in either equation. Like I said in the last example, I try and look for a variable that has a coefficient of one. And I notice the y in the second equation has a coefficient of one, so it'll be easy to isolate that variable. I'll just move the seven x to the other side, and I get y equals negative seven x. Now I need to substitute what this equation tells me y is equal to, negative seven x, into the other equation for y. So I'll rewrite line one with negative seven x plugged in for y. So I have 5x minus 3 times negative 7x minus 2 equals 0. Now I have an equation where the only unknown is an x. We can solve that equation. So to solve this, I'm going to do a multiplication first. I've got negative 3 times negative 7x. That's positive 21x. I'll collect my like terms. 5x plus 21x is 26x. I'll move the negative 2 over. And when I isolate x, I'd have to divide both sides by 26, which would give me x equals 2 over 26, which we could, of course, reduce to 1 over 13. So that's my solution for x. We now need to take that solution for x and plug it back into either original equation. But like I told you last time, it's almost always easiest to sub it back into the rearranged version of the other equation that already has y isolated. I can just sub in 1 over 13 for x right there and easily solve for y. So I have y equals negative seven times one over 13, which gives me negative seven over 13. So my solution is x equals one over 13, y equals negative seven over 13. 
And just like the last one, we should do a left side, right side check, plug it back into both original equations and prove that it satisfies both equations. So I'll just do that quickly just so you can see that it actually works. There we go, so you can see that the point one over 13, comma negative seven over 13 satisfies both equations, which means the point is on both of the lines, which means that's where the lines intersect. So we have the correct answer. Part C. So in both of the first two examples, we were able to get a solution. So the lines were not parallel to each other. They had a point of intersection. Let's look at this one. This one's going to be a little bit different. I'll set it up the same way. I'll write equation one and two beside each other. So the first step for solving by substitution is to isolate a variable. I'll isolate the x in the second equation. So I have x equals six minus y. And now I need to take what that equation tells me x is equal to six minus y and replace the x in the other equation with that value. So when I do that, I'll have two times six minus y because that's what the other equation tells me x is equal to plus two y equals seven. Let's try and solve this. I'll distribute the two into the brackets and I would have 12 minus 2y plus 2y equals 7. I'll move all the constant terms to the right side of the equation and leave the variable terms on the left. So I have negative 2y plus 2y equals 7 minus 12. Well, negative 2y plus 2y, that's 0y. And 7 minus 12 is negative 5. What I see here is an equation where there are no possible values I could plug in for y and get an answer. Zero times anything is zero. There's no way I could get negative five, right? Zero times y is zero. And zero clearly doesn't equal negative five. So when you get something like this, that tells you there are no solutions to the linear system. What do we know therefore about the two lines? The two lines must be parallel and distinct. They have the same slope, but different intercepts. Let's do our last example. Once again, let's set up the equations beside each other. I'm going to have to isolate a variable. Now, none of these variables have a coefficient of one. So I'll just pick the one with the smallest coefficient. I'll pick the x in the first equation. Let's isolate that. So I'll start by isolating 3x. 3x equals 2 minus 4y. I'll divide both sides of this equation by 3. I'd have x equals 2 over 3 minus 4 over 3 y. Now I need to take what x is equal to and sub it into the other equation for x. When I do that, I'll have 9 times 2 over 3 minus 4 over 3 y plus 12 y equals 6. Let's see what happens when we try and solve this. Well, I'll distribute the 9 into the brackets. And there's ways we could simplify this first, but I'll just expand it and simplify after. So I'd have 18 over three, right? Nine times two is 18, so 18 over three, minus nine times four is 36 over three y, plus 12 y equals six. 18 divided by three is six, and 36 divided by three is 12. So I've got six minus 12 y plus 12 y equals six. I'll move the constant term 6 to the right side to be with the other constant term. So I have negative 12y plus 12y equals 6 minus 6. That gives me 0y equals 0. Well, for what values of y is this equation true? For any value of y. You could plug in anything you want for y and it makes that equation true, right? 0 times anything is 0. So this equation has infinitely many solutions, which means the linear system has infinitely many solutions. Therefore, the system has infinite solutions. And that happens when the two lines are right on top of each other. They're parallel and coincident. They have the same slope and the same intercepts. All right, I hope those examples helped you with the method of substitution. Stay tuned for the next lesson where we'll learn another algebraic method for solving linear systems called elimination.